Good morning, everyone. Before we get started, we have a couple minutes here. I just wanted to make sure that everybody can see the presentation and can also hear me. So if you would just uh, in the question area, give me a thumbs up. Yes, everything looks good. Thanks. Okay, good morning, everyone. It's just nine o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We are bringing to you this month, um, as most of you know, we hold monthly CE webinars. And this month, we're going to talk to you about individual coverage HRAs. My name is Lisa Collins. I um, work for Prime Pay, I work in our broker concierge uh, department. And I also in the um, professional development chair for, for Behu. Uh, Want to thank our sponsor today for bringing this content to us, BearCred. If you're not familiar with BearCred, they are a data company. Uh, they simplify the exchange of health insurance and employee benefits data. Um, they built this, this infrastructure excuse me, I have a frog in my throat, that brings health insurance carriers and technology platforms together. Um, they're powering the future of digital uh, uh, distribution and health insurance and employee benefits. And at the end, I'm going to show you something that, that they make available for this topic, ICRAS. It's a really cool um, comparison in every single county throughout the whole U.S., um, the rates of individual and group and how to um, uh, compare that and see where ICRAS may make sense. Uh, so before we begin, a, a couple housekeeping items as we always do. Um, in the GoToWebinar, you do have um, the, the notice that's required through the state of Virginia for the CE. It has been approved for one CE credit, life and health CE credit. Uh, you must participate throughout the entire presentation. So our GoToWebinar will show when you signed in and when you signed out. We're going to be with you for the next 50 minutes or so. So we need to see that you participated during those 50 minutes and to show that you were actively participating and you didn't just launch it and walk away we're required to launch a couple poll questions as well um, we require two but we always um, include three just in case one doesn't work for you sometimes every once in a while somebody has a problem with answering the poll questions and if that happens to you don't worry about it just go in the questions area um, of your dashboard and write in the answer or type in the answer um, of your question and we'll go ahead and uh, qualify that for you. Everybody's on mute because of the number of participants. We're thankful that we have so many participants um, each month, but we do want to take your questions. This is a newer topic and it can be kind of a confusing topic. So put your questions in that question area on your dashboard once again, and we will make sure that we respond to your questions sometime next week um, as as well as give you that, that CE certificate once it's filed. I try to do that by the end of the week um, on Fridays, okay? So with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started. 
Um, just to give you a general overview of what we're talking about today, we're going to talk about where HRAs start real quick, where HRAs started and kind of the evolution because they have changed quite a bit um, as we um, got into, you know, uh, some changes with ACA and then we had a final rule that introduced our topic today, ICRAs. So we'll, we'll kind of take you through the beginning up until today. We'll talk about the final rule and then as it relates to this specific topic on the HRA ICRA. Um, and then how to talk to your employers about it. I understand many of you on this call, you really specialize maybe in group health insurance and this is, we're talking about individual coverage, but there are situations that we're seeing that this may make more sense and you can stay their broker with other uh, uh, lines of coverage or many times we're seeing um, employers offer both the group health insurance and these ICRAs. So we'll talk about that. And then we'll end on some tools and resources that we're gonna make available to you. So starting with a little bit of a history lesson here. So basically, as everybody knows, just to, to level set, HRAs are account-based group health plans. They, are at, they actually fall under Section 105, so they are considered a group health plan. And these um, HRAs allow employers to fund Medicare expenses on a pre-tax basis. So they determine what they're going to reimburse employees for. Many times we see HRAs reimbursed for deductibles, that's the most common, uh, sometimes co-insurance, co-payments. Whatever the structure of the HRA plan is, the reimbursement is tax-free to the employee, and it's a business write-off for, for the employer. Um, these HRA plans were created simply by an IRS guideline, so a notice that was published um, to, to <laughs> 2002-45, I can't get that out. Um, and in that, it provided favorable tax treatment for these types of HRA plans that, that we're talking about. So that went on for many years and then ACA came along and ACA really um, changed quite a bit with the HRA um, plans. In 2002, we, we saw many companies were actually reimbursing not only the deductibles or co-payments, but many times they were reimbursing um, premiums for individual coverage. So when ACA came around, um, ACA, because if you remember, HRAs are considered a group health plan, these HRAs were required to comply with, with ACA regulations. So if you think about uh, um, a, an HRA as a standalone, it, that didn't meet ACA regulations. Okay, so what they said is HRAs could only be sheltered from the, these tax-free um, benefits if they were coupled with an ACA compliant plan. So no longer could you have a standalone HRA. Now, because of in 2010, the passage of ACA, it must be coupled with an ACA compliant plan. Then in 2013, there was a final notice because there was a lot of talk. If you remember, we used to have what we called premium reimbursement accounts. And that simply was reimbursing um, under these HRA Section 105 arrangements, individuals for purchasing their own individual coverage and reimbursing a portion or all of those premiums. So then we had this internal revenue notice 2013-54. Um, it was issued as a result of ACA and it said no more premium reimbursement accounts or they actually called it in, in that um, notice, they called it employer payment plans. And again, it reiterated the need to have the HRA um, coupled or integrated with an ACA compliant plan. Okay, so they said, this is the notice, you've got to follow it. There was a lot of confusion in the marketplace at that time. And they said, we're, we'll give you until June of this year until we're going to reinforce. And they had some really significant uh, penalties if any employer continued with the premium reimbursement accounts. So that really caused a, an unintended consequence as well for small companies. Um, small companies many times didn't have a group health insurance uh, policy, and they were using these premium reimbursement accounts to help attract and retain employees and help employees purchase their own policies. 
And then 2017 rolled around and we, um, we um, got a two, uh, the 21st Century Cures Act um, that was passed and it introduced for the first time QSERA, so Qualified Small Employer HRAs. We're not going to talk about those here today because they've been around for a while, um, but essentially what the QSERAs did is it offered small groups, so employers, non-ALEs, not the applicable large employers were not eligible for QSERAs, but the groups that had less than 50 employees they could um, offer a premium reimbursement for individual coverage, okay? And I'm not, again, we're not here to talk about that today, but it also had limits on it. So it not only limited the size of the company, it also limited the amount that uh, they could reimburse, all right? So then um, in 2018, um, at the time, President Trump, he ex um, issued an executive order and it really increased the HRA uh, usability. And it actually, it expanded really um, the HRAs and it made these um, HRAs an accepted benefit. Uh, 2018, we saw the proposed new regs to expand HRAs. And that's what introduced um, the not only the QSERA but the EBRAs accepted benefit HRA and the ICRAs, the individual coverage HRAs. Um, so what that basically did is it gave you two major changes to the regs. Uh, so the employer could provide an HRA that integrated with an individual health insurance coverage. It has to be a MEC plan, um, but it no longer had to be a group plan, but an individual um, plan. So that is where we are today 2019 with the final regs that were published it made available these individual coverage hras that we'll talk about today as of the uh january 1st of 2020 and you know january 1st of 2020 we we really started having a lot of conversations once that final rule was published um a, a lot of questions because it really kind of it brought us full circle again right we could now offer a a, a pol or a policy uh, an ICRA plan policy to reimburse for these individual coverage so they didn't call them premium reimbursement accounts anymore but it essentially brought that back so let's go over the final rule um just a little bit here um it expands hras as I said, um, and it really can transform our health benefit landscape. We haven't, we're starting to see real activity in these ICRAs now, but I think because of just 2020 and the, the other challenges of that year, um, when they first became available in January, you know, about March, we started really dealing with this, um, all this COVID. So had a lot of discussions, but really starting to see some movement um, now. So as I said, final rates were published in June of uh, 2019, making these available um, in January of 2020. And it did reverse that, that guidance that HRAs can be used to fund premiums um, and out-of-pocket costs associated with your individual market coverage. So it expanded it. Um, we're not going to talk about accepted benefit HRAs today. That's one of the HRAs that were introduced with the final rule. It, it's not really doesn't have a lot of applicability in the marketplace. But at the end um, of this presentation, I'm going to show you a comparison of QSERAs, EBRAs, and ICRAs. And I'll email um, that out to everybody that participated today. I think it's a very helpful um, piece to, to reference from time to time. time, to time. So defined contribution health coverage really is what these HRAs or ICRAs are all about. The company defines what they're going to reimburse and how much. Remember, there's no limit to, to, the, to the ICRAs. It did not do away with QSERAs though. QSERAs were available a couple years earlier. They're still around today. But again, it, because of the limitation of only small employers and the amount, we're seeing more activity really with the individual coverage HRAs now. It was interesting when this was posted. I'll just show you a couple of um, the a couple quotes here. 
um, from um, the labor secretary at the time, the HRA final rule offers millions of American workers more health coverage choices and portability. Really what they were focused on was uh, the choice here. And of course, the portability today is probably more important um, than ever. Choice is because the individual can purchase any individual coverage. They don't have to use their company group health plan that's been chosen for them. So the individual coverage is up to them to meet their specific needs. Then the HHS secretary, when this was, um, was passed, so too many Americans today have little say in how their health cares are financed. So a lot of times the company with the group health plan are governing through the contribution and the type of plans that they've selected for their employees. The employees are kind of stuck with what the, the, the group or their employer is offering. And this is interesting. So their projection is in the next five to 10 years, roughly 800,000 employers will offer ICRAS for more than 11 million employees. We'll see how that goes, but you know we're seeing more and more with like the gig economy, and um, it's just it's really going to change, and we'll just have to keep our eye on it. And then we have the Treasury Secretary um, saying this new rule gives businesses a better way to offer health insurance to employees and allow workers to select coverage that best fits their needs and their family needs. Now, of course, this is going to depend on where you are, the cost of a group health plan versus an individual plan, the philosophy of the company, the industry, and so forth. But generally, that's their, their viewpoint. So as I said, well, we'll have to wait and see. Um, so are we going to see a move away from group health plans? Um, are we you know, really going to see the employers um, philosophical stands on offering employee benefits um, change. Um, current environments, certainly we've seen changes you know, across the board in many different things. Um, are carriers gonna really change the individual policies? Are they gonna make them more affordable? Are they gonna have different structures? Are they gonna have different types of plans? Expanding the individual market. And as I said, the gig economy, I just read something about, you know, everybody's buying these trailers and they're just working from the trailers and traveling the country. Um, so things are changing. Um, as I said, the carrier pricing and also, so the commissions, that, that is something to really consider. Um, you don't want to lose a group as a whole because, you know, let's say that they no longer want to offer or can't offer a group health plan. Let's give them this option of the individual coverage and maybe, you know, some worksite benefits and voluntary benefits along with it. All right, so let's really get into the meat of this and talk about the purpose of the ICRAs. Um, it is, as I said, a defined contribution plan. Basically, what that means is the employer decides the amount of money that they're going to provide and what they're going to reimburse. Um, it does provide the employees with more options because they can go on the individual market. It can be, um, you know, wherever they are, whatever plans they want to purchase um, to meet their family need is up to them. So they purchase the plan and it removes the employer from the insurance risk. It actually does not remove the employer from compliance. And we'll talk about that. There's quite a bit of compliance to adhere to with these plans. Um, but it absolutely can um, control the employer costs. So today, we've all heard for many, many years, increases come, the employer goes through these gyrations of, okay, are we going to absorb the, the individual um, or the increase in the premium? Are we going to pass some along? Are we going to increase deductibles? In these plans, they're saying we are going to give X amount and we will reimburse, let's say, the individual premium up to X amount, and we can even include the deductible and out-of-pocket expenses, or we're just going to um, reimburse the premium up to a certain amount. The employer now has a, a, an absolute, a defined amount that they, it's capped, and they will not have any additional exposure. So if there's certain industries that um, may not offer group health plans, I'm thinking, you know, retail and hospitality, um, this may be a very good way to help attract and retain employees uh, that may not have had coverage in the past. 
Uh, we had just recently um, a group out on the West Coast that was an agricultural group, and they have seasonal employees. And, uh, you know, seasonal employees come when the harvest is around. And they actually um, are offering an ICRA plan to the employees that are not eligible for the group health plan. And we'll talk about this where companies can still have a group health plan and offer ICRA. So these seasonal workers are offered a reimbursement up to a certain amount each, each month if they purchase individual coverage. And they have found that it's actually helping bring back these seasonal employees at harvest time where they were struggling to you know, have that consistency and bring them back. Um, the purpose also of ICRAS is to remove integration requirement after what that ACA did. Uh, so now it can be integrated with an individual coverage plan as well. It, it can offer greater design flexibility. Employer decides what the, they're going to reimburse. It can get as detailed as reimbursing prescriptions, but not co-payments, um, not reimbursing for actual certain things. Um, you know, if it may be Christian-based plans come to mind that they don't want to reimburse for abortion, things like that. Um, and the, the advantage of offering a group health plan and an individual um, medical coverage is the classes. This is a big differentiator with these individual coverage HRAs. You can class out employees, so the employer still can offer a group health plan, maybe to all their full-time employees, but then they're classing out, and we'll go through the definition of classes and what can and can't be done here in the next slide, or probably two slides. Um, but can really meet a need of particular employers through these classifications and who you're gonna offer the group health plan to and who you're going to offer the individual coverage HRA plan to. The nice thing about ICRAs is this is not only for small groups, it's for any size group. So it could still be small group like the QSERAs, but it can be, we just wrote a group that had over 2000 employees um, and they classed out a certain um, group of employees based on their geographic location. So we're seeing all sizes here. It can um, provide coverage for active employees, and you see here former employees. So COBRA is also, COBRA participants can be um, in these plans. As I said, the employer can have the group health plan, that's GHP there, although this is key, they cannot make available the ICRA to those employees that are eligible for the group health plan. So if you have eligibility for group health plan, in my example, full-time employees, they cannot be eligible for ICRAs. Some of the eligible expenses, um, the individual medical premiums that we talked about, Medicare premiums. Yes, Medicare premiums. When we saw this come out in the beginning, we really did a double take on that because traditionally in the past, Medicare premiums were not included in anything, but now the ICRAs can um, reimburse for medical premiums. You cannot class out though your Medicare um, enrollees and we get that question a lot. You can also reimburse for 213D expenses. So think any of the qualified expenses under an FSA and any of the qualified expenses under like an HSA, those are your 213 definitions. So under these ICRAs, you have the same definition, 213D expenses, over-the-counter items, um, prescriptions, deductibles, um, you know, dental, vision. You can also reimburse for deductibles, co-insurance and co-payments, and your accepted benefit premiums. So your premiums for dental um, and also for vision plans. Over on the right-hand side here, you see uh, we've listed a 90-day notice requirement. This is kind of a, this makes uh, ICRAs a little challenging because the employer must give the employees a 90-day notice prior to the effective date of the ICRA plan. And the notice requires, you know, a, quite a bit of information to really help the employees make an educated um, decision. So 90-day notice, if you think about that, 90-day notice, let's see, that takes you into, we're almost into March, March, April, May. So June 1st is the earliest. If you were, say, today, an employer made a decision to offer an ICRA, it can't be effective until June 1st because of this 90-day notice requirement. 
All right, so that's a little challenging. Um, and um, the QSERA also has that 90 day notice. So non discrimination testing uh, rules do apply. And, you know, the NDT rules can really throw something um, here. But if you if you think of consistency and if it conforms across classes, like if you decide that you're going to reimburse single coverage this amount and family coverage that amount, you're fine. No issues with NDT. But when you start, you know, um, with other executive and different uh, peer, um, effective dates of reimbursement, just be consistent and you won't have any trouble with uh, passing the NDT. NDT though, non-discrimination testing does not apply if you're only reimbursing medical premiums. So that makes it a little bit easier, um, a little less um, compliance required if you're only reimbursing for the individual medical premiums. Your standard, uh, standard ownership rules do apply. And this means that because this falls under section 105, your owners, your sole proprietors, your partners, your um, two percent or greater shareholders of an S corp are not eligible for these plans. All right, and as I said, classes are allowed. We'll touch on that here in a minute. Uh, these plans are portable. This is a very nice feature because it's an individual policy and it's not tied to the employer. Um, they can take the the plan with them if they were to leave the company. The, the employer determines the amount, no limit. I mean, they can reimburse the, the, the full amount if they want. They can offer, let's say $2,000 a month and reimburse the full family coverage. Uh, carryover does not count towards the new employer plan limit. So if there's any um, money uh, left over at the end of the year, that's what we mean by the carryover. You have to offer an annual waiver opportunity. And the reason you have to do this is because potentially these plans could hurt somebody's ability for subsidies, right? Because if they're um, buying on the exchange, an individual market, um, uh, an insurance policy, and they have some uh, premium tax credits, potentially, the, these types of plans may actually um, hurt their ability to get that. So you have to provide the opportunity to have them waive out of these plans. All right, let's see, I can't get this to move forward. My looking for my mouse here. Just try to, there you go. Okay, so we are going to launch our first poll question. And remember, poll questions, you absolutely need to answer these to get your, um, your credit. So ICRAs require an employee notice how many days prior to the beginning of the plan year? 60 days, 90 days, or not required, it's included in the SPD. Got about 80% of the people have already voted. Oh, you guys are listening. Okay, well, I'm gonna ready to close. 100% have voted. So 88% of you said 90 days, which is the correct answer. So 90 days prior to the effective date of ICRAs, you must um, give this required notice to the employees. So. Again, we're talking June 1st at the earliest because of that required notice at this, you know, if we were to um, make that selection today to offer an ICRA. All right, so we're gonna move forward here. All right, so what plans, health um, insurance plans are allowed under ICRA? So your individual medical plans, now this can be on or off exchange, your catastrophic, um, plans. So under the age of 30 um, or for a hardship exemption, a catastrophic plan if purchased is eligible um, under the ICRAs, so the premium reimbursement for those plans. Medicare Part A, B, or Part C, and actually D, I meant to add that on here, and your student health insurance um, policies are also eligible under ICRA. What's not allowed is your short-term limited duration insurance. Actually, that would be allowed under the EBRA, the Accepted Benefit HRA. 
any kind of healthcare sharing ministry plans, not eligible under ICRA, your fixed indemnity plan, your accepted benefit coverage only, your association health plans, your MEWAs, your multiple employer welfare arrangements, and TRICARE. So you got Medicare is eligible, but not TRICARE. Kind of interesting there. So those are your allowed and not allowed policies under the uh, individual coverage. For non-discrimination testing, I touched very briefly on this. As I said, same conditions within a class, don't deviate other than like single or family and you'll be fine. But I do wanna bring to your attention that um, the maximum dollar amount is very similar to what the language that we've seen in ACA. So the maximum dollar amount made available to the oldest is not more than three times the maximum dollar amount made available to the youngest. All right. So keep that three times rule in mind when you're structuring what's, um, what the employer is going to reimburse under the ICROS. And very commonly varies by tier single family. If you have an HSA, so many people will go to the individual market and they will purchase an HSA plan. So these are compatible um, with HSAs if you are reimbursing for the premium only. If the ICRA starts reimbursing for deductibles, then they are not compatible with an HSA. So I would probably recommend if you've got a large group um, a class of employees or no group health plan and you have a lot of people purchasing these plans many will purchase the hsa and keep it to a premium reimbursement um, plan only your health fsa is eligible so um you know they can participate in a health fsa and if they bought a, a non-HSA plan on the marketplace, the FSA could reimburse the, you know, co-payments, the, the uh, co-insurance, the prescriptions, and so forth. Medicare, again, the Part A, B, C, and reimburse premiums for um, the Part D and Medicare supplemental coverage. So that could be very advantageous. So let's talk about the classes. Um, you, they must be enrolled in an ACA compliant um, plan, so a MEC plan at a minimum. And the classes that are allowed are full-time, part-time, seasonal, salaried, hourly, temporary workers of a staffing firm, um, geographic location, we see a lot of this. So uh, maybe you've got a company that has, um, you know, they're based in, let's say, the Virginia area, and you've got a narrow network or a network um, just for uh, Virginia. But then you've got, you know, you per this client of yours purchases a group out west, let's say, and that network does not apply to them, then maybe you offer, based on their geographic um, location, you're going to offer the people out west this ICRA plan and the uh, the employees in Virginia, the group health plan. So that's a very common situation that we're seeing. Employees of a um, collective bargaining agreement. Actually, we haven't even touched a union anything yet. So I can't really give you a scenario or an example of that. Not satisfying um, the waiting period. So think about this. An applicable large employer has variable hour employees. These variable hour employees are typically in a measurement period of about, uh, well, not about, 12 months. That's what we see as pretty standard. So for 12 months, a variable hour employee does not have um, group health plan eligibility or coverage. Now, after the 12 months, if the look back period, they've worked consistently, they may be eligible on the 13th month. But during that 12 month, months, what you can actually do is you can offer those employees an ICRA policy. So think about all those variable hour type of um, industries that you have. Um, you know, I, again, I go back to kind of retail or hospitality. This may be a very viable option to offer an ICRA to those variable hour employees. So kind of an interesting thought there. Non-resident aliens with no U.S.-based income, and you can actually combine any of those um, above and kind of make your own um, class as long as it meets that, that definition. 
very important to keep in mind, if the company is still offering a group health plan, there are certain minimum class sizes that must be met that um, only apply to certain classes. So full-time, part-time classes, sal salary, hourly classes, and that geographic location if the rating um, area is smaller than a state. So those classes there, if the company is offering a group health plan, they've got to make sure they have these minimum class sizes above. So if they have less than 100 employees, that class size has to be a minimum of 10. 100 to 200 employees, it's a 10%. It's a percentage of the total employee population. And if they have more than 200 employees, then the minimum class size is 20. Now, if they don't have a group health plan, this doesn't apply. It's only if the group health plan is there. So see, there's kind of a lot to think about here. Your special enrollment period. So um, you, to be eligible for the individual coverage HRA, you have to maintain coverage. Um, typically, open enrollment is November through December 15th. Now, when Biden got into office, he just opened up, um, I think it runs, what, to middle of May? We're in a um, special enrollment period. I think it's the middle of May. So um, typically you only have a very short period of time, but right now, you know, it's opened up and this may be viable as well. Um, so ICRAs or QSERA triggers a special enrollment period for employees, but they only have 60 days to buy a plan. So a limit on the amount of time to make the choice. And that helps with, you know, that, just being able to pick up a plan if you get sick. Um, so that prevents that. This is really kind of, um, it wasn't really paid much attention to in the beginning, but really starting to talk about this a lot. ICRAs can um, qualify as a MEC and therefore because it has that MEC qualification, it can um, meet the employer mandate for your applicable large employers, all right? So that, that's a big deal. Um, as long as you follow the ACA rules, right? You're offer uh, the coverage to 95% of the full-time employees and the benefit is considered affordable. So you really want to watch that affordability to make sure that the ICRAs are considered affordable. So the monthly employee contribution towards the individual insurance premium in excess of the ICRA dollar amount provided monthly does not exceed 112 of 9.83% in this year in 2021, okay, of the employee's income. So that, that's your affordability definition. Plans can be considered to provide minimum value if it is considered affordable. So you've met all the criteria, and therefore ICRAs can be an employer, uh, meet the employer mandate if you have an applicable large employer that you're working with. That's pretty important, that's a big deal. Your affordability safe harbors, um, affordability, your lowest cost silver plan, that self-only premium. Um, so it's really in the employee's prime, um, primary site of employment. They talk about employee's rating area. There was a lot of confusion when that first came out, but it is the primary site of employment for ease of you know, managing that affordability. All right, so we've got the look back month, safe harbor as well, benefit amount determinations prior to the date when premium amounts may be available. So you've got the calendar year plan and you've got the fiscal year plan. And you guys, I'm not going to rehash all this because, you know, you, you know that, um, but just wanted to mention it here that we have the affordability safe harbors under the ICRAs for the employer mandate. Let's talk about the compliance requirements. So because it's Section 105 and ICRA is subject to ERISA, so you must have those uh, ERISA documents an SPD, a summary plan description that goes to the participants, and an SBC, summary benefit coverage, must go to the participants, okay? It's important to note, though, that the individual medical coverage isn't subject to ERISA. It is the ICRA plan that is subject to ERISA, okay? Um, if you've got a company size um, that is larger, form 5500s may be required. 
you'll see here too that ICRAs are subject to COBRA. So somebody that is a, a current employee leaves employment, you must extend the ICRA to that um, employee that has left. So if it's the premium only part of it, they can continue to you know, have that reimbursement as long as they stay covered under that MEC individual plan. We talked about being subject to non-discrimination testing already. And I wanna reiterate again, the annual notice of 90 days before the plan year, all right? Um, there is a model notice that's available on, their, uh, on the government website. Um, so you can pull that off and you know, share with the employer what they need to be communicating. Maybe you don't have an administrator yet for the ICRA, you know, and you wanna at least get that notice out. For new hires, you need to provide um, by their eligibility date. So let's say you have an ICRA plan in place and I'm you know, covered as of March 1st, you wanna make sure that I've got that notice as a new hire um, on March 1st, which is my eligibility date. For new employers, um, so this is new, not new ICRA plans, but a new company just established offering an ICRA plan, so it doesn't happen much here but um, they must provide it by the first day of the plan year. Okay, so almost all of your companies, you're gonna be looking at that 90 day notice. There also is an annual and ongoing employee attestation saying that they do have coverage. The individual medical um, coverage policy is in place. So annually, they have to provide that, but every time they submit a claim for let's say a monthly premium reimbursement, they have to sign off on the form indicating that they do have that um, coverage. Then the employers must inform the employees annually that the individual medical um, coverage policies are not ERISA plans. So another reporting or notice requirement and the amounts need to be reported on the W-2 and that's for that, you know, if there's any kind of premium tax credit, um, the IRS can kind of cross-reference that information there. So see, there's still compliance with this. You don't get away from that completely. Let's talk about the employer involvement. So if there is a group health plan, they may wanna consider terming it, but again, remember they can keep it and class out and offer the ICRA just to certain um, employees. So just have that conversation with them, see what makes sense for their employee um, um, population. Effective date and eligibility, determine that. You want to determine if they're going to class out, defining that class, and making sure, very important, that it meets those minimum class sizes that we talked about if they're still keeping that group health plan. They determine the dollar amount, they determine whether or not that um, any leftover can be carried over, and they also determine if they're going to prorate it. So new hire coming in in the middle of the plan, you know, a plan year, do they prorate the amount that's available? Communicate the plan is designed 90 days prior. Have we worn that out? <laughs> Just make sure you do that. And really interesting that you can actually include under section 125, if the employees um, can pre-tax their portion of the premium not covered by the ICRA. So maybe the company is only providing, let's say $200 a month and the policy is 500, that 300 can be tax uh, payroll deducted on a pre-tax basis. You must allow the employees to opt out of ICRA annually. We talked about this. And at termination to preserve any kind of tax uh, credit that they may receive. If the ICRA is affordable, the employee is not eligible for the premium tax credit. If it's not affordable though, they can choose either the ICRA or that premium tax credit. And that's where you need to have that waiver. All right, so we're gonna launch the second poll question here. Make sure you answer this. This is an easy one. Are ICRA subject to ERISA? I'm gonna go ahead and launch that. No, they're not subject to ERISA because ICRAs are not a group health plan. And yes, they're subject to ERISA. All right, 95% of you have voted one more person. So yes, they are subject to ERISA. A couple of you um, did answer that no, they're not subject to ERISA. It's only the individual medical coverage. So the individual medical plan that's not subject to ICRA, or sorry, subject to ERISA. 
Your individual plan is not subject to ERISA, but the ICRA, the individual coverage HRA plan is absolutely subject to ERISA. So I'm gonna close this one out and we're gonna move on. Good job. All right, so employer discussions. So is an ICRA strategy a right fit? You wanna take a look at their group health plan. Maybe the group health plan is just getting crazy out of whack. Um, look at the local market. So that their cred map that I'm gonna show you here in a minute, it's really interesting because like before this, I went to the Richmond area and Richmond individual policies are actually cheap or the, the county is actually cheaper than group health plan, slightly, but it is. But then I looked in my market, like I'm in Northern Virginia, and the group health plan's cheaper. So you want to really look, drill down to the very local, not state, but local market. Look at the labor market. Look at your workforce. You know, do you have um, a disparate workforce? Maybe you need to class it out, and it makes sense to do so. Um, if you're seeing employees really starting to wave off coverage because it's simply the group health plan is not affordable anymore, maybe you know it's time to talk ICRAs. Geographic challenges, um, specifically like networks that we talked about. Um, do they want flexibility? Their employee, more employee choices. Um, is there a collective bargaining agreement that maybe these plans would make sense for um, ones that aren't covered by the CBA? Um, ALEs, absolutely affordable. So maybe this, you know, is an option for them. And then your non-applicable large employer, so under 50, consider um, making non-affordable for employees to receive the premium tax credit. So some interesting conversations there, just some bullet points to discuss with your, your clients. We're going to talk about... Um, I know I didn't talk about QSERA, but I do want to, because it's been around and there is conversation around which one makes more sense, I do want to kind of do a very quick comparison here. And as I said, I'll give all the participants on this uh, CE or side-by-side -side comparison that will help with this as well. So employer size, if you're com comparing QSERAs versus ICRAs, QSERAs only for non-applicable large employers under 50 employees. ICRA for any size. So really the advantage comparing these two plans would be the ICRA because it can accommodate any size group. Dollar limits. QSERA has limits on it, 5,300 for single and 10,700 for family. Now maybe that's sufficient and that's not an issue, but ICRAs have no limits. There's no minimums, there's no maximums. So again, your ICRA really is more advantageous over QSERA if you're worried about dollar limits. 90-day notice requirement. It's required for QSERA and it's also required for ICRA. But right now we're in a relief period because of our state of emergency. Um, so right now ICRAs are more advantageous because you don't need to do that 90 day notice. Um, you do have to provide the notice, just not within 90 days. That will be ending here shortly, I'm sure. So no longer would in the future that 90 day, they'd be equal. QSERA and ICRAs both need to provide that 90 day notice. Premium tax credit eligibility. QSERA does not eliminate that eligibility. Um, Participation in an ICRA, though, does bar that eligibility. So in this example, uh, QSERA would be more advantageous than ICRAs. Ability to offer group health plan. QSERA, you cannot offer group health plan. It is um, not um, available. But for ICRAs, you can offer an ICRA and you can offer a group health plan as long as that employee is not eligible for both. So advantageous. ICRA plans over the QSERA if there is a, um, a, a desire to have a group health plan. And then ERISA, COBRA, non-discrimination testing, all that fun um, compliance. QSERA is not subject um, to this, I ICRA is subject. So QSERA has less compliance um, with it um, because it's technically not um, falling under that, that ERISA, okay? So just some comparisons there for you. 
our last poll question. Let's go ahead and launch this. And remember, you've got to answer these not right to get the CE. Can an employer offer a group health plan and an ICRA plan? Yes, as long as the employee is not eligible for both, or no, this is against ACA rules. We're just closing out here. Got 80% of you who have voted, so please vote. 90% voted. I'm going to have to shut it down here. I'll give you 10 more seconds. As we're collecting the final responses, you guys are right. 91% of you indicated yes, as long as the employees are not eligible for both. They can only be eligible for either the ICRA or the group health plan. You can offer both, okay? Let's go ahead and close this out. All right, so starting the conversation. So CMS um, has a really good lookup table um, for the lowest cost silver plan. Uh, Bear Cred's cost map. I'm going to show you an example of that here in a second. I think it's the coolest thing. ICRA's cost saving analysis. We have um, analysis that we can provide to you. Prime Pay has really tried to make this easier for brokers because this can be a challenging conversation to have with your groups. Um, ICRA comparison brief. So that side by side comparison between the QSERA, the EBRAs, and ICRAs will provide to you. Um, we also have some flyers if you, you know, have an interest that can be co-branded if you really want to talk to your, your groups about this. All right. I'm going to skip over that. Here's your comparison that I talked about. So it's, it goes through the qualified expenses, the dollar limits, the carryover balance, prorated amounts, whether or not you can offer the group health plan. Um, so a lot of different comparisons there, and it does compare those three plans. So we'll get that one out to you. And then this is the Veracred map. We will make this presentation available um, to everybody. And on the top of this slide, you'll see there's a live link to this map. So this map looks at the entire country and the individual, um, anything in blue is where the individual is more expensive. And as it gets lighter, it gets less of a different uh, a variance between the small group market and the individual. And then you've got the gold area where the small group is more expensive. So you'll see right in kind of the Virginia, right in the Richmond area, you kind of get into that gold shaded area. That's because the individual coverage um, is less expensive slightly. Now, if it was really gold, um, like some states that you see is very gold, then the small group is definitely more expensive. Then you get um, further up in the northern part of Virginia and you'll see where the individual is more. Uh, and this is done by maps. So, and this is, you know, you can kind of play around with it and take a look. So uh, we'll, we'll um, make this slide available so you can click on it and uh, take a look for yourself. All right, so with that, we are done. I will get you your certificate by next week. Usually I get it out the following Friday and we'll also get you those tools. Um, as long as you participated for the 50 minutes, we're right here at the 50 minute mark. And also as long as you answered at least two of the three poll questions. So with that, we and, and any questions that you have, we will respond to those questions as well. So with that, we'll wrap this uh, monthly CE up. Thank you everyone for participating. Stay safe out there in the icy conditions. Hopefully further south in Virginia, you don't have what we have up here. It's a mess. So have a good, uh, good day and a great weekend. Take care.